talk about antigen testing, um, mainly because I think we confuse some people if they call in or they're considering becoming a patient of ours and we mention allergy and they say, well, I, yeah, I don't have allergies, I'm not an allergy patient, which is great if, if you're not, good for you. Um, however, sometimes we'll still suggest that we test certain things in the allergy room, which a lot of people may not consider allergy. So the body can actually react to practically anything. And the immune system is hopefully on surveillance 24-7, 24 hours a day throughout our entire life, hopefully protecting us against harmful things. But every once in a while, if the immune system gets a little bit off balance, gets a, a little uh, misguided or confused, it'll begin reacting to things that it shouldn't, like benign stuff like grass pollen, dust. Um, and when most people think allergy, you think, you know, hay fever, pollen allergy, that kind of stuff. But the immune system can go after food. It can go after chemicals, it can go after metals, if you've ever known someone with like a nickel allergy. Um, and what really surprises people is we can become sensitive or, and again, it's not the best word, but or allergic to our own normal flora. So, and the more that we study this and look into this, it's a fascinating thing. We see patients all the time that have become sensitive to their own candida sensitive to their own normal gut flora, whether, you know, E. coli, staph, strep. Um, and if that's the case, your best option is to actually try to reintroduce tolerance back to the immune system um, so you're not walking around reacting to, your, to yourself all the time. Um, it just, it, it astounds people that that can happen. I'm here to tell you, when I first learned about it from Dr. Lieberman, I was blown away, but we see this phenomenon very, very often. It's a, it's a common thing. They actually knew about it back in the 1800s. One of my earlier allergy textbooks talks about um, when they were testing and treating for autologous uh, bacterial vaccines with success in the late 1800s, but kind of fell out of favor because there's, there's really an art to it that's difficult to master and it's floral allergy doesn't happen to all of us. So again, if, it, if it's part of, of what's going on with a person, you get it right, you get the treatment right, the breakthrough can be amazing, but if it's not an issue for someone else, you might test it, treat it, not find anything, and, and so I think that was part of the issue is, um, like, like anything, it's not going to apply to 100% of the people 100% of the time. So really, when we say allergy treatment, what we're really talking about is let's test some different things based on the person's history to see are you reactive to these things, is it causing inflammation, you know, if someone tells me I've never had hay fever, I don't have any problem in the pollen season, I'm not going to want to even test them for traditional allergens. But I may say, you know, let's see if you're sensitive to candida or let's see if you're sensitive to E. coli or, you know, let's maybe test some of the chemicals and see, you know, should you really avoid formaldehyde because you're, you know, incredibly reactive to it. So anyway, that's, you know, I guess it's somewhat semantics um, that we're arguing, but essentially when we say allergy, it can mean a lot more than than just run of the mill, you know, runny nose, watery eyes. So that's. that's